All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first lab for remote learning here. Um, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to take the time, go over kind of how demos and labs and things will work, um, what you guys will do as far as um, papers as well as the labs themselves, and then we're going to actually demonstrate our lab. So what you should have with you is in the assignments tab or in the files tab, you're going to see this sheet right here, a mise en place sheet. Okay. And as you'll be able to see, up at the top will be blank spaces for your ingredients. Then underneath you have equipment. So any equipment that you will need for this lab will be right here. And finally, your steps on how to make this lab. So as I'm going through this today, make sure you are filling this out, um, whether it's printing it out or filling it in virtually on the computer. Make sure you're going through each step, okay? For this first lab, I will definitely take my time to make sure you guys fully understand how to fill this in, what to do, um, so that when you guys actually start cooking on Monday, you'll have a really clear idea, okay? So, what we're going to be demonstrating today is simple, just regular, good, old-fashioned pancakes, all right? So, the equipment that I'm going to need for today is two mixing bowls, a regular large frying pan, preferably non-stick, okay? A spatula, a whisk, a rubber spatula or something to stir with, measuring spoons and measuring cups if you do not have a baking scale. And if you are going by, if you are measuring by weight, which I would highly recommend because as we've talked about, that is the best. Um, best way to measure ingredients. Make sure you have that today, all right? So for that equipment list that I just went through, what's nice about video demos is that if you've missed anything, you can always just rewind it and go back on the equipment you need, okay? So as I'm going through, just one thing to note, I'm going to give you both the volumetric measurements of the ingredients, so things such as one cup, one teaspoon, two tablespoons, etc. I will also give the weight measurement as well, such as 4.5 ounces, 0.1 ounces. So that way you guys can kind of choose which way you can measure or which way you want to measure the ingredients here. Okay? All right, excuse me one sec, let me just check the camera real quick. All right. Okay, first things first, before you start cooking any lab, make sure your counter is ready to go, it's clear. The only things you have around you are your ingredients, your um, equipment. Make sure you've read the recipe all the way through and that you understand it, that you have everything set ready to go before you start. All right, first up, before you cook anything, wash your hands. Okay, so let's go down the ingredient list first. Okay, so on your mise en place sheet, go ahead and fill out the ingredients and their measurements as I'm going along here. All right, so 
you're going to need 4.5 ounces of flour or one cup of flour. So again, whether you're choosing to do volume measurements or weight measurements, you have the option there, okay? So it's either four and a half ounces of flour or one cup of flour. 0 0.1 ounces of kosher salt. For those that don't know what kosher salt is, that's what is listed here. You will be given in your kits kosher salt for the for this entire class. I'll explain during another lab why we are going to be using kosher salt as opposed to normal table salt, but it's really important that you start switching over to kosher salt for all cooking, not just baking, but just regular cooking as well. Okay, so 0 0.1 ounces of kosher salt or half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, so point, uh, point 0.1 ounces of kosher salt or half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Point 0.2 ounces of baking powder or two teaspoons of baking powder. Now this, it may just be easier to measure by volume, but that's up to you. So 0 0.2 ounces of baking powder or two teaspoons of baking powder. Half of an ounce of sugar or one eighth of a cup of sugar. So one half ounce of sugar or one eighth of a cup. A single egg. <coughs> so this is a ingredient measurement that is by count as opposed to volume or weight. Six ounces of milk or three fourths of a cup of milk. <coughs> so again, that is six ounces of milk, three fourths of a cup of milk. Now in your ingredient kits, I have put uh, in your kits powdered dry milk, okay? You can use that as a substitute for this recipe. Just look at the back of the um, package. It'll give you the uh, measurements that you need to mix together in order to get milk. I will also later make sure you guys understand how much powdered milk to use and how much water to use in order to get six ounces of whole milk, okay? so. Again, it's just one unique challenge with remote learning here is that we have to kind of make substitutions with perishable or non-perishable ingredients. Um, if you just have regular milk, like sitting in your fridge, I would definitely recommend using that. Okay, okay so next ingredient, one and a half ounces of unsalted butter or three tablespoons. So again, one and a half ounces of unsalted butter or three tablespoons. Okay, real quick, since butter is going to be an ingredient that you are going to need to get, super important whenever you go to the grocery store, make sure you are purchasing unsalted butter. Okay, the reason why is because if you put salted butter in your recipe, and you're putting in salt as well, the pancakes are gonna become overly salty and they're gonna be inedible. Now, I know some people are thinking, why not just use salted butter and just leave this salt out? Well, the problem with that is that salted butter, you don't know exactly how much salt is in that butter. So you're kind of playing a guessing game here. My feeling is go with unsalted butter and then season your food yourself. You shouldn't have your butter seasoned food. You should, you should be the one in charge of seasoning your food, controlling salt levels. So again, unsalted butter. You can use salted butter for serving later. Um, nothing wrong with that, but I would definitely, if you're going to be cooking with it or baking with it, 
go with unsalted butter. Okay, so one and a half ounces or three tablespoons of butter. And this is going to be melted. So, if you give me one moment here. Okay, as you see on the side of the sticks of butter, they have the measurements for tablespoons. I'm going to just simply cut that. Okay, and now I'm gonna put it into a microwave safe bowl here or ramekin or whatever, and I'm going to melt this in the microwave for 10 seconds at a time. So I'm gonna put it in the microwave for 10 seconds, check it, wait, put it in for another 10 seconds, and so on, okay? If I put this in just for a minute at a time, the butter is gonna melt, the water is gonna boil inside the butter, and you're gonna get an explosion in your microwave. And your parents probably will not be very happy about that, okay? Alternatively, you can just melt this in a pan that and then use it in your recipe, but I would definitely recommend the microwave for this. Okay, so now you see my butter is melted and ready to go. Make sure I'm cleaning as I go here. And finally, the last ingredient is going to be half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now for this, because the measurement is so small, half a teaspoon, we're not even gonna bother with weight here. We just are gonna go with a volume measurement, okay? All right, so those are your ingredients for the top part of your mise en place. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into these steps. The equipment we already just went, we already went over. The steps are is what we're going to take care of right now. Okay, first step here. I'm going to combine the dry ingredients into a large bowl. So I'm going to combine the dry ingredients into a large bowl. So since I'm measuring by weight, I'm going to set my scale and make sure I have the setting correct. All right, so for dry ingredients, that would be my four and a half ounces of flour. Okay, so there's my four and a half ounces. Now, if I'm using a kitchen scale, now that I have the flour in the bowl, I need to balance out the scale again and start at zero. So I'm going to hit what's called the tear button, T-A-R-E button on my scale. And I'm gonna add in my kosher salt. So this is part of the dry ingredients. So I have flour, salt. I'm going to add in my baking powder. And that's it for my dry ingredients. So I have flour, salt, baking powder, okay? Now, if you want to, you can add a little bit of cinnamon into this. You can add um, any sort of flavoring that you want, but just for a regular plain pancake, I'm just gonna go with that. So I'm just going to mix that together. Okay, and there we go. So that is step one. Mix the dry ingredients together in a bowl. 
step two is going to be put the or put whisk the egg into a separate bowl. So adding in my egg. Now I'm going to use my whisk. So you can use a whisk or a fork here. I just simply break that up. Okay. So that's step two. Just simply whisk the egg in a separate bowl. So step three is I'm gonna put my wet ingredients into this bowl. So, if I balance out the scale here, I'm going to add my half an ounce of sugar. Okay, now that seems weird. Why would I put sugar, which is clearly dry, into the wet ingredients? Well, simply put, when sugar is introduced to water, it melts, it dissolves. So in baking and pastry, a lot of the time, sugar is considered a wet ingredient. So that's why we put the sugar inside this, okay? So my wet ingredients, I have my egg, my sugar, I have in my melted butter. I'm going to add in six ounces or three fourths of a cup of milk. And then finally, my half a teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm going to whisk that together. And there we have step three. Okay, so, so far our steps have been, step one, combine the dry ingredients in one bowl. Step two has been whisk the eggs together, then add, for step three, add in your wet ingredients such as milk, butter, and vanilla. Now if you were thinking about it, back to our quick breads unit here, what mixing method are we using here? Dry ingredients in one bowl, wet ingredients into another. So think about that for a second. Okay. Now in this case, this is called the muffin method. So what I'm going to do for step four is I'm going to add my wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Now, super important here. When you mix this together, you do not want to over mix. Think back to when we were talking about gluten. The more you stir this constantly, the more gluten that's going to develop, meaning the chewier and tougher your pancakes are going to be. So what I want to do is just stir this until there's no more dry flour and that's it. I'm going to stop right there. Once there is no more dry flour, I'm gonna stop stirring. It's okay if there's a couple lumps, it's okay if it looks a little clumpy, that's okay. That's gonna cook out later when we, when we put it into the pan, okay? But do not overmix this, okay? So I'm just gonna stir this together. Okay, a whisk is, a whisk is the best tool for the job here. And that's it, okay, you see, there's still, you may be able to see there's still some lumps, there's still some clumps, but there's no more dry flour. So stop mixing, walk away, all right? Just giving a scrape on the side, and there we go. Okay, so this is our pancake batter. 
So now we're gonna go to the fifth step, which is to cook it in a preheated skillet. So let me go ahead and move the camera here and I'll get you guys over onto the um, pan. All right, so we got our pan ready to go. I have, you can see here, I've got my heat about medium, medium low. You kind of want to err on the side of the pan being too cold rather than it being too hot. Because if it's too hot, it's going to burn and it's not going to be good. Okay. So this is step five, which is to cook in a preheated, greased skillet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of baking spray and I'm just going to grease the inside of the pan, or you can take a little bit of butter and just kind of oil it that way. Okay, if you use a can of vegetable spray, just real important thing, for those of you who have a gas for those of you who have a gas burner at home, do not spray the pan while the pan is over the heat because these cans have a propellant in it that is flammable. So, for instance, if I spray it, you can see right there, it's going to catch fire. Okay. So, that's one of those things, like, don't try this at home. Definitely one of those things. So I'm going to turn off my heat and then give a quick spray. Okay. okay. So I have my pan hot and ready to go. I'm just going to take a few spoonfuls of my pancake batter and just add it right to the pan. Okay, and then I'm just going to let it cook. I'm going to go with kind of smaller sized ones here just for our demo. While this is cooking, I'm just gonna get a plate for something to serve it on. Ah, oh, this sucks, they kinda ran together. That's okay. All right, I'm just gonna be patient, let that cook. When you know they're ready, is you'll see kind of throughout the edges you're going to see bubbles come up from from below and come up through the surface when you're starting to see those bubbles kind of come through the center here you can kind of take your spatula and just give it a quick little peek so just giving it some time you can see as it's cooking the edges are kind of starting to set when I go to when I go to flip this, I'll kind of break break it up right in the middle there. And now we just play the waiting game, really. Okay. While you're waiting, I would definitely recommend uh, cleaning up as you go. Get any used dishes into the sink or into your dishwasher. Now you can see there's a couple bubbles that are kind of coming through the surface. I'm just going to 
slide my spatula underneath, okay, quick peek, okay, this needs just a little bit more time. Okay, when you're, um, one thing, just make sure whatever spatula that you're using, that it's heat proof, because obviously you're touching a plastic uh, spatula onto a hot surface. So make sure you're not just sitting this inside the pan, otherwise it will melt. Break that up in the middle there. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna slide my spatula underneath and then give it a flip. So you can see a nice bit of browning there. Just form it back together. Okay, the other side is a little more tricky to get right just because, of course, you don't have the bubbles coming through the surface anymore. So just every minute or so, just give it a quick peek. If it's browning, if it's browning right, and it's ready to go, as soon as it looks good, then you can take it off the, uh, take it off the heat and put it right onto your pan. Now, optionally, if you want to, you can add other flavors and additions to this as it's cooking. So say if you have any blueberries in your house, when you first pour in the batter, you can put in some blueberries, um, you can put in chocolate chips. Don't use the chocolate chips that I gave you in the kit though, because that's for another lab. Okay. Um, you can use all these different uh, flavors and fruits. Uh, you can have pecans, nuts. Um, you can even do like M&Ms or candy and if you really want to go crazy, but that's up to you. Okay. So take a quick peek and you can see this is nice and browned and it's ready to go. So I will put it onto my plate and then I'm gonna start the next round of pancakes here. Now, real quick, you can kind of, you might be able to hear, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it through the microphone on the computer, but if you're putting your pancake batter down and it's making a really loud sizzle, your pan is too hot, so lower the heat, okay? So this is the time, like I said before, if you want to add in things like blueberries, uh, chocolate chips, things like that, you can add it in right now. All right, give it a quick peek. Looks good. Take a quick peek. I think it needs a little more time. All right, that looks good. Turn off my heat. Okay, and there we have it. So now mine made just uh, four pancakes. However, I do have more batter left over. You may want to go with smaller pancake sizes here. That's completely up to you, um, but it should make you a decent portion here. Okay, so this is the end of our first demo here. So make sure you have all parts of your mise en place sheet filled in, ready to go. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, make sure you're watching back through the video if you need any help or if there's like anything that you are missing in the mise en place sheet, okay? So this is it. Uh, once you are finished with this, head back to the class and we'll proceed from there.